Okay, so I am here at East Side Distillery with Lenny, one of the owners. How long have you had this distillery? Um, this is our fourth year. We've been in this location um, a little more than a year and a half. You started this with a friend, yeah. right? Yeah, uh, one, uh, one of my good friends, Bill. How do you start a distillery? Do you start it like in your garage or do you get a location? You can't start a distillery in your garage. <laughs> That's illegal. Um, we kind of got the idea from traveling down to Belize and having some wonderful rum down there and just having great spirits in other countries that I've never had before. And that kind of just started the seed. I'm an artist and my business partner is an engineer. So we kind of have a good combination of skills to do a little bit of everything. What he always says is um, I'm the brains and he's the brains. <laughs> so, um, and you have to have a little bit of an entrepreneurial spirit to do something you think other people say you can't do. It looks like you have a lot of lovely, um, would you call them spirits? Yeah, spirits. Yeah, mm -hmm. I would never seen you have some seasonal things. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a big fan of Christmas and the holidays. So um, we've got a, a spice liqueur, an eggnog liqueur, and a peppermint bark liqueur. Nice. And so um, you do welcome people to come in for a tour. Yeah, exactly. We're so, open seven days a week. So you have a couple of your, uh, you've got vodka, bourbon, and rum here. Can you give me an idea of the difference in how they're processed a little bit and sure. the different ingredients that makes it? So um, rum has to be made from cane sugar. That has to be the base spirit. Um, whiskey is made from grain. Um, a bourbon that has to be made from at least 51% corn. And then vodka can be made from anything, but there's uh, basically two ways to distill. Um, there's the higher temperature and faster, um, which is how everything else besides vodka is made. And then vodka is made at a slower temperature because it has to come off the still at 95% pure. So it has more to do with the production process um, than anything else. Whereas rum and whiskey and brandy and tequila and everything else is done at a little higher temperature and it comes off the still around 65 to 80 percent pure. Uh, I love it because it's a little science and a little art. The actual science behind distilling is actually fairly simple. I mean every every spirit you've ever had is basically some kind of beer that's distilled. So if you were to make beer out of molasses or sugar there's, that's what rum is. Wow. You know, whiskey is made from corn and other grains. So if you were to make a, a beer from you know corn and other grains, we use different yeasts. It's not exactly the same, but the beginning of the process is the same. Wow, very interesting. Um, and so I noticed online also there's several distilleries in mm -hmm. the area, right? So um, I don't know if they're all open to the public, but you, if somebody well, wanted to come and take a, like a little walking tour, they could, couldn't they? Yeah, we're all part of a distillery row, which is a, a nonprofit. Um, there's um, House Spirits is down the street, New Deal and Vin are just around the corner, and then Stone Barn is um, a few blocks that way also. So there's five distilleries all within walking distance. Nice. So you can make it like a day activity. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that's really cool. Great. Well, thank you so much, Lenny. Sure. We will go back and see how it's all done. Awesome. So we are here with Mel. Uh, are you the distiller, one of the distillers here at Eastside? I would say so. Distillation, by definition, is just the separation of alcohol from water by heating it up. Um, so what these machines do, um, with the help of this column, is boil off the alcohol while leaving the water behind. Um, so the key to doing that is finding the right temperature. Alcohol has a much lower boiling point than water, um, so these are electrically heated. I turn it up to that right temperature, hold it, that alcohol in here will start to steam. The steam of the alcohol gets pushed up the column while the water vapor gets left behind. So. Pull the steam over here. This is called a condenser. I pump in cold tap water into an internal pipe. When the hot steam hits the cold pipe, it condenses back into a liquid. And out of this spout comes our raw spirit. No kidding. That's it. Silver rum comes out. Uh, we do post-distillation infusions for those. So the coffee rum is our silver rum straight from the still, uh, infused with about 400 cups of coffee. Oh, yeah, that's wow. it. This is one of our small fermentation tanks. Um, I think Lenny said everything starts as kind of a beer wash. Yes. Um, I am fermenting some molasses in here right now. If you want to take a look. It smells like a strong beer. Yes, and it will be. It'll be about 20%. Wow. It's amazing how many um, different types of alcohol you guys create with this. Right? Right? <laughs> and how many different varieties do you have? Oh, we're putting out three rums, two bourbons, and a vodka right now. 
All the liqueurs are rum based, so we don't have to do anything special for those. But yeah. Wow, really impressive. Yeah, thank you. I'm looking forward to tasting the eggnog liqueur. So all of our holiday liqueurs are the silver rum base, which I think Mel may have mentioned. Uh, for the holiday spiced liqueur, we have the silver rum, and we take your basic mulling spices and put that in there. So you've got a little cinnamon, cloves, mm -hmm. nutmeg, a um, little vanilla. And the cocktail we feature with that one is mm. hot apple cider, which is mm. delicious. That's yummy. That's our first one that we dubbed Christmas in a bottle. So then next we have the eggnog avocat liqueur. And the avocat is actually a traditional Dutch egg liqueur. It's much thicker, but it's not gonna be the same as your traditional Americanized eggnog. So it has the milk, sugar, eggs as the base. And then there's also a little vanilla and a little lemon in there. So it actually tastes kind of like a custard. I love that one. Okay, I approve of that one. Mm. And then last but certainly not least, this is probably my new favorite holiday liqueur is the peppermint bark. So we use 100% pure peppermint oil as well as 100% extra fruit cocoa powder. Wow. And you can use these just on their own. Absolutely. Dinner drink. On their own. Pour them over ice cream, I'm thinking. Exactly, they're all great over ice cream. They're, uh, these two in particular are great with coffee. And then, like I mentioned, this is really good with cider. Wow. The holiday with the bourbon actually makes a really nice mm. holiday toddy. You could even do a variation of a chocolate martini, mm -hmm. like a little holiday yes, chocolate martini with, with the peppermint bark. That one's my favorite. I love it. Well, thank you, Kirsten. You're very welcome. Very fun tasting at Eastside Distilling.